All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is the pre-lab video for the first lab of the year in AP Chem, um, the percent proper in grass lab. Now this lab that we're going to be doing, it's very procedure heavy as you have undoubtedly noticed from the packet. And you're going to be doing a lot of new stuff and working with a lot of new things that you have never worked with before. And I recognize that. I know that you're probably a little overwhelmed. Wow, I don't know what to do. So, watch this video. I'm going to be showing you a lot of pictures and diagrams um, that I took myself, so they're not just playing on the internet, to show you what is the equipment you're going to be working with and how you're going to use it and what goes where, and hopefully you'll feel a lot more comfortable with the lab after watching this. There are going to be four parts to this pre-lab video, as shown here on the first slide. Um, I'm going to, three of them are essentially uh, talking about the procedures the lot itself and the equipment that you'll be using and the last part is a little bit of theory on the calibration stuff. So we're going to start by talking about polymeric glass. Then I'm going to show you the reaction that you're going to be doing and have you notes on that. Then I'm going to uh, show you the um, render uh, probe that we're going to be using, the color render and what you need to plug the color render into the lab steps too. And then we'll map a little bit on the calibration curve. So first up, working with volumetric glass. Uh, volumetric glass are probably for us the most precise piece of glassware that we can use. Volumetric glass are designed with, there's actually only one marking on the flask, and if you fill the flask precisely to that one marking, then you know you have a large number of significant figures that precise measure, however big that particular flask is. Now, you'll see um, in the uh, our pre lab and in the lab handout that will say, you know, transfer your solution from your beaker, which really we just use beakers not to measure things, but just to mix things, which is exactly what people are doing to the beaker in this lab. Transfer your solution from the beaker to the volumetric flask using the stir rod. I'm probably thinking, well, how do I use the stir rod? If you look at this guy, like this one, so you want to uh, pour from the flask, from the beaker into the flask. Notice the beaker's a file, and it's filled. But the, the key thing here is that you notice the placement of the stir rod um, sort of into going into the funnel, and that I'm actually not pouring into the funnel directly, I'm pouring onto the stir rod. And uh, when you do that in a nice, slow, even stream, it really make, ensures that all of that liquid is getting into the uh, flask and it's splashing all over the place. So when it says transfer using the stir rod, you sort of use the stir rod to help kind of guide the stream of the solution into the um, as it says here, then still. That's not the point of that. We're just making sure that everything gets transferred nicely and evenly. Now, um, working with the volumetric flask. The big, big key thing about working with the volumetric flask, as I said in the uh, slide, is there's only one mark on it. And the mark is always on the neck. So, this section, that's the neck. And, like, for this particular flask that I used, so the mark is right here. And that's it, there's only one mark. And when you fill the flask to that marking, you know you have precise that volume. So a volumetric flask that is for 100 milliliters, which is what you'll be using, you could not use it to measure any other volume except 100 milliliters, that's it. Uh, you can't use it to measure out 50 milliliters or 150, it's just 100 and that's it. You have one line. But that line is super precisely exactly 100 milliliters. Now, when you get your liquid filled so you're probably about here, you know, around that area of the flask, then you want to start using a pipette and going drop-wise. Because you cannot, if you fill uh, over the line on the neck of the volume of the flask, you have to start all over the case. You have to make your solution again. You have to start go way back to the case and start from scratch. You need that finesse here to sit, as it shows in the flask line, exactly on that line. And it's the bottom of the meniscus. So we're talking like you go one drop over and you have to start all over again. So that's why I'm showing here that you, you want to go slowly and just go drop wise so that, that, that meniscus is sitting right on the line. That's the volume of the flask that you work with the flask. Now, once you have filled the flask, then you have to, to mix your solution because probably you are adding distilled water, meaning you had some stuff at the bottom of the flask and then you added water up to that line on the neck. So now you have to mix the stuff together. How do you do that? You have to cap the flask first. And for us, we're going to 
have it using her film. Her film is like essentially lab grade swing wrap. It swings really, really, really well. And when you get her film, this is when you get it, this is what it's gonna look like. It's this little square. But you see there are actually two pieces to it. There's the parafilm itself, which is like the waxy bit, which spreads really easily, and uh, that's sort of the cling wrap thing that you're going to be using. And then this, which is garbage. This is just the paper that's been used to put the, the parafilm on, and you don't want that. So you want like the clear, see-through, cling wrappy. It's, it's kind of waxy, you'll see that when you get it. Um, so you, but you just throw out the thing that's just this term. And then the images on the bottom here, I'm just showing you um, how you seal off the extra flap. So you, you do want to, like, when you start, you want to stretch it over the neck, but not too much. Uh, and then uh, wrap around. So that you can sort of see that if you're in this one, that we have to seal on the top, and then you, you wrap it around the top. And then lastly, how do you mix your body to flask? It's called an inverted swirl, and that's quite literally exactly what you do. So now that you have the, the top sealed really tightly and neat, which is what Paracel will do for you, have a really nice tight seal, um, you just simply invert with the volume of your flask, and then swirl it around, and then turn it back upright. And then invert, swirl it around, and turn it back upright. You're going to do that several times, and that's how you mix it. Um, be very careful when you're doing this. Make sure you're using both hands. Obviously, um, volumetric flasks are probably one of the most expensive pieces of equipment you'll be working with this year because they are incredibly precise. That's what a volumetric flask is. That's what it does. It's precise to give you one volume. Uh, so you break it. Don't break it. Use both hands. Next, the next part of the pre-lab. Now that we've talked about working with volumetric flasks, uh, sure, how you fill them, how you mix them, how you cast them. Um, and now I wanted to actually show you the wrap and hacked reaction. The, the reaction itself has to be done in the same way. When you combine the wrap with the acid, I am going to do that for you because the acid is, if you remember molarity, the acid is actually 15.64, not 0.156. 15.6 molar. It's essentially 98% nitric acid. It's ridiculously caustic. It's very nasty stuff. And I don't want you coming anywhere near it. And you probably don't want to be coming anywhere near it either. So you're going to bring your beaker over to the hot plate, or over to the steam plate, where I'll have the acid. You're going to ask me. I'm going to put the acid in your beaker for you so that you don't have to essentially come into contact with that. I really want to avoid that. When that happens, though, Almost right away, you're going to get this brown gas that's going to be produced that's shown here, right? And notice if you have the wash glass um, covering the top of the beaker to, you know, essentially control the gas and make sure it's not getting it where we don't want it to be, but that's also why we're using it in the fume hood. Um, the, the hot plate's just on low, and you'll see kind of the brass will start to dissolve immediately because it's super, super nasty acid. You'll make a sort of greenish color. You're going to essentially leave it in there until all the gas is gone. And I might sort of play around with your watch glass, take the watch glass off a little bit, but put some more gas to see. But we don't want any of that brown gas getting into the glass and then it's toxic and then it's not nice to stop. Then it's still in the fume hood. You're going to take your, your beaker off the hot plate and then have some of the still bar. And just to show you, you will have a color change. You will get this really nice blue color after you um, Add in the still wash, it's going to go from this green to blue. So, just to sort of show you what it what it's, what it's going to look like, so you're somewhat aware of uh, knowing what to expect. All right, the third part um, working with the colorimeter. So, this is right here, so it shows you all the equipment that you're going to be using to work with the colorimeter. This is the colorimeter. Maybe it actually says, you know, colorimeter on it. Um, this is the last part of the This is the interface. This is what helps the color, uh, this is what allows you to get the readings off of the color runner. Those two things you have to be connected to one another. You need cubettes. Right here, you need cubette lids. 
you're going to need a windscreen lab wipe. That's not a tissue, by the way. That's a windscreen lab wipe. And you're going to need a pet. So that's all the stuff that you've been working with in color winter. Um, how is everything connected? So that's sort of the first thing. Well, the two things that you need to connect are the color winter and the lab flex pro. Those two things have to connect to each other. And it's very, very simple. Um, the power button is on the lab quest. So you need to first of all make sure your um, lab quest is turned on. And then you'll notice on the slot, this is also on the lab quest, there are these channel uh, slots. And that's where you connect the colorimeter. So you're going to plug your colorimeter into the lab quest 2 in one of those three channel slots. And as soon as that happens, literally, as soon as it happens, you'll see this green light on the telemeter turn on. You'll see the um, lab quest to start to measure absorbance, which is what the telemeter is doing. That's what the telemeter allows us to do, allows us to measure absorbance. So you can turn your lab quest on, you plug your telemeter into channel one, preferably, on the lab quest, and then it's it, it on, it's working. It's very simple. So you just simply need to connect what you can do with something. There's no power supply. Um, there's no laptop, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, working with the colorimeter, so you'll notice that there's a little slot that opens up, that's what this picture is showing, so you have to sort of open it up. Um, and the buttons as well, there's a kind of, uh, you, you have to um, calibrate it, make sure it's selected by the one. So if you, you want 635 nanometers selected, if it's not, we just use either one of these two to get the green line to the point on uh, uh, wavelength. When you open that slot, though, that's where the stuff that you're going to be measuring the uh, absorbance of, that's where it goes uh, in that little slot. And you'll notice, and I tried to highlight it, I hope you can pull it easier, there's going to be a black arrow that uh, is on the side there, it's pointing in this direction, and that's the light. That, so that's the color that is showing you the direction that the light is coming in. So that you know that that's important because that's how we line up our cubette. All right. So next one, properly handling the cubette. This is the next thing. There are two sides to the to every cubette. Um, the cubette is small. It's rectangular. Um, one uh, so parallel sides of the cubette will have a ridged uh, texture to them, and then parallel sides of the cubette will have a smooth texture up to them. You have to handle the cubette the right way. The question is, do we pick up the cubette basically by the rich side, or do we pick it up by the smooth side? So what I'm showing you in this first picture is I'm handling the cubette with my fingers on the smooth side, touching all kinds of the cubette, all areas of the cubette, and then in the second picture I have my fingers on the rich side, and I'm holding it up the top. Never, ever, 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 never, 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 no, 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 do you ever handle the cubette by the smooth side. The light goes through the smooth side. And you need to prevent fingerprints. Um, if you get fingerprints on the cubette, it will change the absorbance reading because your fingerprints will interfere with the light passing through the cubette. You only want the light passing through the cubette to read the sample that's in the cubette, not your smudgy fingerprints because you didn't look in the direction of the So don't ever handle the cubette like I have in this first picture. It's a horror which I hated doing it. It pained me to pick up the cubette in that way because it was so wrong. You will always handle the cubette by holding it at the top of the rich side. So you never touch the smooth side at all. Just sort of pick it up at the top of the rich side. And this last one, this last picture I have because you always want to remember to add a cap once you have your solution in your cubette. And you'll notice too about how much it fills up the cubette. This is about how much you want. Um, you want it at least about two thirds of the way through to ensure that that you have enough. Light going through, and that you have samples sort of in the, in the path of the light that's going through. So cap your, your cubette. Um, loading your cubette. You're going to use a lint wipe, and I have not shown this explicitly, but use a lint wipe to wipe down, a lint wipe to wipe down the smooth side, again, to make sure that there's absolutely no fingerprints, no smudges, no marks on the smooth side of the cubette. And you load it in. Notice I have the smooth side facing the arrow, so that I know that light is passing through the smooth side. And then these last two pictures, this is with the um, colorimeter closed, and this is with the colorimeter open. So remember how we have, like, this is, 
open it, you have to open it to um, add in the um, QVET. So, and then this is after I close, this next one is after I close that opening, and then I open it again. And what I want to point out is if you have the uh, polymer open versus closed, it changes your absorbance reading. So, we don't ever want to take readings with the color number being open. That's a big no no. You want to make sure your color number is closed. And I also want to show you that you don't have to do anything at all. You don't have to press any button at all. As soon as you close your, your color limiter with your cubet in there, uh, it will read an absorbance. So that big number, general one absorbance, 2507, that's the absorbance. That's the number that you're reporting. That's what you want to write down. So it immediately tells you what the absorbance is. And then you close it off, boom, there you go. There's your source. So we don't want to have a close or have an open uh, colorimeter to get absorbance. That's very, very bad. But the the uh one of your is going to immediately tell us that we Alright, and so the final thing in this for that video is uh, what are we doing with the calibration curve? And this is more of a theory. So this is not about the equipment you're working with, but instead about the idea behind the lab. So the first thing that we're doing um, in the lab is creating those serial dilutions. Right? That's part of one. You're creating a serial dilution for a copper solution so that you know precisely you know, what is the amount of copper um, per milliliter in these four solutions. The, the idea is that you know precisely those concentrations. You're going to then determine absorbance. So you're going to use the colorimeter. You're going to put the stuff in the cubet. Put the cubet in the colorimeter and close the colorimeter to get an absorbance reading. Um, and then you're going to create a graph. And this graph on the x-axis, this is going to be your concentrations. So this is where your different mixtures, your amounts, your different percent compositions. So you'll have the um, you know, 1 to 8 you should see a fairly straight line. That is your calibration curve right there. So you create these solutions, you get their absorbance readings, and then you graph it, you plot it. This is telling you the relationship that they tell you the relationship between absorbance and uh, the amount of copper in that mixture. And you're figuring out a line of best fit. You're figuring out, you know, what is the slope, what is the, uh, um, you know, why is them to C? What is the uh, uh, best fit equation for that line? Because then you're going to put your unknown sample in the colorimeter, and you're going to get an absorbance reading. And maybe the absorbance reading for that unknown sample is, let's say, here. How do you use calibration? Hey, I got an absorbance reading over here for my unknown. What does that tell me? Oh! It tells me that it must have a concentration of that. It must have a certain amount of copper. Uh, so that is the idea behind uh, what we're doing. We're going to make known solutions, and then we're going to analyze an unknown. And we're going to uh, uh, analyze that unknown using that calibration curve. So I hope this helps you in feeling a little more, more comfortable in knowing what to do for the lab. If you have any additional questions, feel free to come see me. If you take any notes in this video, you may use them on the day of the lab.